Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to the UVM toolbar, as well as the new message hyperlinks available in the 12.2 release of our SimVision debug solution. Specifically, we'll be looking at the toolbar in general. Uh, we'll be diving into each of the different buttons, as well as looking at the various kinds of messaging hyperlinks we have within SimVision and what's required in order to utilize these features. So I'm going to switch now over to our demo. This is the same environment we've been using on all of the other demo videos throughout this series. On the left hand side we have our console window and if you're using the Cadence System Verilog UVM solution, in other words the Cadence UVM library, then what you'll notice when you run your simulation is you'll have a new toolbar that will be added as of the 12.1 release that will have a number of new buttons. This toolbar appears in the console window as well as the design browser window by default. It may not show up in this exact location depending on how you have your preferences set, but the icons and the buttons should be there. So what do these buttons do? So what we've tried to do with the toolbar is give access to the most frequently used commands that a user might want to launch through a single click. So for example, at time zero, before the UVM environment has been constructed, we can't actually do much debug or exploration. So what we could do is run for, for a period of time, let's say one nanosecond, 10 nanoseconds, and that would construct out the environment. But it's much easier to be able to just simply click on one button in order to build out that environment. So if I click on this button here called run to UVM build phase, uh, build phase done, then what happens is the entire environment is constructed and we take it one step further than simply the build phase. We actually go to the end of the connect phase and this connects up all of the ports to allow you to do a little bit more uh, debug and exploration. So notice now I can explore my entire environment. I can see all of the objects and I can take a look at all of their internal fields and classes. The next button I'd like to introduce is run to the beginning of the next UVM phase. So right now we are in the connect phase. So if I type UVM phase, you'll see that connect is printed out. But if I click on the, this button here, UVM uh, run to the beginning of the next UVM phase, then I do the same UVM phase printout. What you'll see is now we're at the end of elaboration. And I can continue to progress through the phases as I go. Now, the next button is rather than simply run from one phase to the next, you might want to actually set a breakpoint and run to the beginning of a particular phase's start. So using this dropdown, I can set a breakpoint at the beginning of any of the built-in UVM run phases, and then I can click run and run to the beginning of that phase. I can also launch the breakpoint management tool very quickly to see what breakpoints I have set, and I can manage those by enabling or disabling things. This drop-down button here actually sets the global UVM messaging verbosity. So this is a one shot uh, for controlling all messages throughout all levels of your verification environment. So if I click on this, I can set the messaging verbosity to something like, let's say, high. And you'll see that the tickle command for setting verbosity is entered on the NCSIM command line. Now there's a number of other options that could be passed into this UVM message. However, this just gives users a quick access to being able to increase or decrease the verbosity dynamically throughout the simulation. The last button I'd like to introduce uh, in the quick launches here is the information button. This launches the Cadence Help system at the UVM multi-language page as a starting point that allows you to easily explore down into the UVM uh, documentation and you can get information about our e-solution as well as our system Verilog and system C solutions in the UVM space. The last button I'd like to introduce here is the drop-down. So the UVM drop-down button allows you to list out the UVM components, the top-level components, as well as launch the UVM register viewer and each of these was focused on in a different video within this series so I won't dive into it too much as well as the library version which was covered in the commands, uh, UVM debug commands video. System Verilog messaging hyperlinks though is a new feature in the 12.2 release and this allows you to enable or disable the hyperlinks in the uh, messaging console. So what are the hyperlinks? Well here we have an example of a UVM info message and 
In this info message, we have a link to the source file. We also have a link to a timestamp, and we also have a hyperlink to a hierarchical object. So if I click on any one of these objects, then I'll be taken directly to, let's say, the source code for where that informational message came from. Or if I click on the hierarchical object, then what you'll see is that that object will be automatically expanded out in the design browser and highlighted. Or if I click on the timestamp in the waveform window, then the cursor time in the waveform will jump automatically to that time. So this is an example of an info message, but let's run for a little bit of simulation time and we'll encounter an assertion. And I just want to show you that there, there's colorization amongst these messages. So UVM info shows up as black, uh, UVM warning shows up as yellow, and UVM error shows up as kind of a dark orange or a red color, depending on your monitor settings. And each of these have hyperlinks, and of course you can click on any one of these to auto expand out and do some further debug. The great thing is when you do have a message that gets printed, you can get directly to the point of failure very, very quickly just through clicking on this hyperlink. Now, in addition to UVM messaging hyperlinks, in the 12.2 release, we've also added in new hyperlinks around assertions as well as reinvoke messages. So here's an example of an assertion. We have colorization around the assertion message, and we can also jump directly to the particular assertion in the source, or again, the timestamp, or we can click on the assertion hierarchical name, and that will actually open the assertion browser for us that will allow us to do further debug there. So I hope you found this uh, video informational. Do check out other videos within the series.